Perhaps on a summer's day in July, you may have watched the clouds drifting behind a tree like this white oak. And as you saw the new leaves moved by the wind, you may have wondered how they could so soon have grown from the tiny buds of winter. So here are the opening buds of the white oak tree, recorded by time-lapse photography, so that in a few seconds, you can see what actually happens during two or three days of growth. Moving pictures are shown at 24 separate frames per second, which gives the illusion of motion. But these time-lapse pictures are spaced five minutes apart, so that when shown 24 per second, the action is speeded up about 7,000 times. Here is an opening bud of white ash, another of our important hardwood trees. Because it takes several days for growth like this to develop, we cut twigs from the trees and bring them indoors, where we place them in water and give them constant lighting so that they can be photographed. You have now seen how different the white oak is from the white ash. This tulip tree bud shows still another of the beautiful growth patterns of nature. Notice how each tiny leaf is folded neatly sideways along the mid rib and the way in which it expands and flexes into its final mature shape. When you focus your moving picture camera on a growing bud, you can only guess how fast it will open and whether or not the unfolding leaves will develop where you want them. Quite often a bud will open too fast or it may sulk and grow very little. Sometimes you get no cooperation whatsoever from twigs brought indoors and placed in water. Instead of opening as expected, this flower bud of the tulip tree simply wilted and did not open at all. But if a few days later we go outdoors to the tree itself, we shall find dozens of these beautiful cup-shaped flowers which give the tree its name. But long before the tulip tree flowers, the flower buds of the many willows, including this, the pussy willow, attract attention and are brought in for home decoration. Most people think of these as just pussies, but if you watch them through the weeks as they slowly develop outdoors, you will find that a pussy is really a cylindrical cluster of many tiny flowers. On any one tree, they are either all male like these, which you see developing pollen, or all female, which are not shown in this film. In the willows, the male pussies or catkins are of special interest because they not only provide a beautiful display against the blue sky of the early spring, but are also extremely important to the honeybees. See what a hurry they are in to collect the golden pollen and pack it in a ball on each hind leg. Their motions are so rapid that you can hardly follow the way they attack the anthers, but the result is clear to see. Pollen is a necessary food for honey bee young or larvae in the hive. And so with pollen baskets full, the field bees come home and go scurrying past the guards and up between the crowded waxy combs where thousands of larvae are waiting to be fed honey and the new pollen. The soft maples, both red and silver, are also early flowering. These are the colorful flower buds of the red maple and contain only stamens. The female flowers are usually in separate buds on the same tree or on separate trees. You can see that another problem of time-lapse photography is to keep the growing plants in focus over a period of from one to three days. For best results, the camera should be focused every hour or two. And when you leave the laboratory at night, you always wonder where the subject will be the next morning. These are the female flower buds of the silver maple. The flowers themselves are very small and are packed closely together in the bud. If we remove all but one flower from the bud, we can then compare it in size with the head of a pin on April 10th, these females were catching pollen. Ten days later, we begin to see the winged fruits of the silver maple developing and can watch the slow opening of the leaf bud just above the fruit cluster. By the 2nd of May, the fruits, although still green, are nearly full size and the new leaves have expanded rapidly. One month later, the mature double fruits break apart in the center and each half takes off to spin through the air, sometimes 50 feet or more before alighting on the ground. 
Notice the intricate pattern of the veins in the wing. If you will collect several handsful of these silver maple fruits and throw them up in the air, you can see how they circle around like tiny helicopters on their way down. Silver maple fruits germinate as soon as released, and here is the young tree emerging from the seed. Several days' growth is here compressed into 10 seconds on the screen. At the top is a leaf bud, and below it, two flower buds of the eastern cottonwood. Here come the staminate catkins from a twig brought indoors on April 7th. In common with the willows, these catkins consist of many tiny flowers arranged around a central stem. Outdoors, it took about 10 days for these red males to reach full size and to get ready to shed their pollen. Meantime, the females on separate trees show little signs of emerging. But just as the males were ready, the females put on a burst of speed, broke through their protecting, but now hampering, bud scales, and were ready for the pollen wafted to them by the spring breeze. Now that flowering is finished, the leaf buds open. To bring a twig from the cold outdoors into a heated room accelerates its growth. But this soon stops when the stored food is used up. You then wait several days and try to find outdoors other buds which have, meantime, grown to about the same stage as the ones you are using. In this way, you continue your photographic story. The female flowers in about five weeks have developed into these bead-shaped capsules. Now ready to open and release their tiny seeds, each one equipped with a parachute of silky white hair, which may carry it many miles away from the parent tree. So many of these silky parachutes are leaving the tree that it's like watching a snowstorm in June. You can also see how this tree got the name Cottonwood. Cottonwoods are especially common on river flats because the tiny seeds have very little reserve water and must soon land on a moist place or they will die. Near the tree, masses of the cotton may be trapped by grass and weeds. The cottonwood tree is quite common in the Great Plains states and the Western Indians used to collect the cotton for stuffing pillows. Masses of cotton may drift on the water of nearby streams, become lodged on the edge of a sand or mud bar, and so be in a perfect place for the seeds to grow immediately. Now you can see how small these little seeds really are by comparing them with the size of a common pin. And you can also witness the birth of a tree and how one tree emerged normally but the other one got tangled up in its own parachute. The growth which you saw took place in about two days, but even a week later, the tree on the left was still hopelessly tangled and did not develop normally. It takes two years for the seedlings to grow into a form which most people might recognize as a cottonwood tree. The magnolias are among our most beautiful flowering trees. This one is the cucumber tree, so-called because the young fruits look something like miniature cucumbers. In this film, you have been watching the miracle of growth, recorded in a way utterly impossible until recently. The scenes you have viewed have never before been seen by the eye of man and will never be recorded again, either by this photographer or any other photographer. Even though nature's patterns are similar, each individual possesses unique characteristics. It is hoped that this film will help you to better enjoy the world of niche surrounds us.